Hi, welcome to video number nine. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't have Vicar and Linda Bull as they're real busy on the road. So I've got Ian Collard. And um, it's going to be, yeah, it's a really good interview. I had a great, a lot of fun doing this one. So um, over to you, Ian. Hi, uh, welcome to my next uh, video. I've got um, Ian Collard here and um, he's going to be playing uh, at Giracle next year with the Three Kings. And um, yeah, welcome, welcome to my little uh, interview, Ian. How you going? Uh, glad to be here, Bruce. Um, uh, really, really pleased to. Um, thanks heaps for uh, taking time to um, you know have a little chat with us. Um, oh, my pleasure. I was just wondering, um, you know, how, what what got you into music? You know, particularly blues, or was it blues that started? You know, you on your musical journey? Yeah, sure. Look, actually, um, my first group was kind of like a well, like an alternative group in, in, the, in the early '80s at high school. I was listening to. Um, we didn't really call it alternative music, but we were listening to kind of 60s garage music and cowpunk kind of stuff, you know, like the Cramps and the Gun Club. And, and then from there, I started joining the Dots. I had that first Gun Club record and they had some Robert Johnson references and Howling Wolf. So I traced those things back. I got some Muddy Waters records. And, uh, and yeah, from there, I started listening to blues and um, I picked up the harmonica and ended up getting into a band pretty quickly. And, um, yeah, and then I've been playing blues pretty much ever since. Yeah. So um, harmonica, you know, you were drawn to that as your first instrument, you know? Yeah. I wanted to, I, I've always wanted to play the harmonica I, I, from the very first time I heard it. And I can't even remember how young I was, but I was really interested in it. And, um, yeah, finally got the right harmonica. My parents bought me this like toy one, and that sort of deterred me because I couldn't get any good sounds out of that. But um, yeah, finally, finally got the right one, like a little ten hole hona, and um, it just sort of sat down with it and sort of kind of reasonably quickly managed to get some rhythms and learn how to bend notes on it. And I thought I was fantastic in this, and I was, I was playing it everywhere I went and you know, I was playing at parties and I got in the band just doing that. Awesome. So are you, are you like, you know, self-taught? Because, I mean, some of, you know, some of the people I've spoken to, well, they're self-taught yeah. and they've just, like, listened to records over and over again to, to you know, find that's, out. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. I, was, um, I just uh, tried to copy the sounds on the records that I was hearing. And, um, yeah, there was one other guy that was getting around Melbourne. I'd follow him around and I'd pick his brains a little bit, but I never got any lessons of him and such. I, pro I should have got lessons, you know, I would have learned a lot quicker, but um, yeah, I didn't have the money. But yeah, no, self-taught. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, because a friend of ours, um, Charlie Musselwhite, he, he just says, oh, I wish I listened a lot more, <laughs> you know, with all these people talking to him. He just wasn't, you know, he's just having mm. fun almost, you know. Um, yeah, well, I kind of learned off him because one of the first gigs I went to, I took a, my tape recorder to and I taped the Charlie Musselwhite gig. Uh, and yeah. I just went, came, came back and I was just, you know, I'd just try and play along with that and try and, you know, copy his licks. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, um, I, I remember the first band that I heard you play in was uh, Collards, Greens and Gravy, you know? Yeah. That, I've got, which brings me to just a bit of a clip of that, you know, because some people mightn't have actually heard of that band before. Um, sure. <laughs> Yeah, great. So yeah, sorry. Yeah, that I um, you know, um, I was so sad to hear about um, the your guitarist in that band you know, that um, yeah, not that long ago. It's um, it's such a tragedy that you know so many great musicians have um, yeah, have lost lately. Yeah. Yeah, he, it was very sad. Uh, he uh, got pancreatic cancer a couple of years ago. He was 57 years old. He was way too young. Yeah, that is. That is. Um, but, um, wow, memorable days. Oh, yeah, that's um, that probably, you know, apart from the four-day riders, um, you guys were, um, yeah, on top of my list. <laughs> oh, cool. Thank you very much. That's good to know. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, yeah. But uh, um, so it brings me to the next kind of, 
like, I mean, I just saw a little uh, thing a bit late, uh, a little while ago. A guy called yeah. um, Sean Emmett is like, it's like yes. you're kind of mentoring um, young kids because, like, I mean, he's now playing guitar with Collard's Green and Gravy. Is that that's right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, he doesn't need any mentoring at all. Yeah. He's, um, he's from up, up your way, actually. He's a Kaima boy. Oh, yeah. Um, he uh, is a really great harmonica player and uh, he turned up at my place um, oh, a bit over 12 months ago and uh, just wanted, he was having a visit down in Melbourne and he wanted to play, um, you know, talk about harmonica stuff with me. Mm. One thing led to another and I, we, he started playing guitar and we started jamming a bit together and, uh, and uh, I realised that he'd be a perfect fit for replacing uh, James in the band. So he's been playing with the band for a bit over a year now. Yeah, right, yeah. You, it's, you, I don't know, you seem like the per you like mentoring and, you know, giving young guys a go. I, I really like that. Um, it's, it's a, yeah, well, it's, it's, that's just a happy coincidence, really, that I'm being able to give him a, a go. But, you know, it's, hmm. it's only because of his talent that he's, he's doing it, you know. Yes. You yeah. know, I'd like, like to think that I'm a mentor, but, um, yeah, no, I, I just needed a good guitar <laughs> player and he fit the problem. <laughs> oh well, you know, I mean, most people could just sort of go, you know, oh well, okay, well, that's great, mate, but you know, I've got this older guy, you know, <laughs> I should, you know, I don't know, I just, I really like it, I, I just really think it's a great thing. Yeah, no. I couldn't find anyone else, and because, I mean, the other thing too is most thing, most guitar players are flat pickers; they play with a flat pick, mm. and um, if you haven't got a bass player in the band, you need someone who plays with their thumb and their finger, and he can do that. Yeah, and it's surprising how hard it is to find people who play that style anymore. And the other thing too is, is because he plays harmonica, he's, um, he knows exactly what's required to play behind a harmonica player. It fits yeah. in really well. Yeah. And um, and the other thing too was all the songs that he liked ended up invariably being songs that I used to play in Collar Greens and Gravy, all the old Jimmy Reed stuff and yeah. the all the stuff that we did too. Yeah. So yeah, once, uh, that worked out really easily. Oh, cool. Well, I might just play a little bit of that before we get to the three keys because. Um, just to yep. show everyone a bit of the, the history, of, you know, a bit of the background for you. Um, yeah, sure, that'd be great. One, two. <laughs> Yeah, th thanks. That I mean, that's that's great. You know, um, it's really good to see that the band continues. You know, in in, in a form. Yeah. You know, I, I really like that. It's yeah, no, I'm really happy with with uh, the way it's it's turned out. Actually, I mean, it's tragic um, circumstances that got us here, but yeah, yeah, um, we're really enjoying playing music together, and um, I'm loving playing all that all that old harmonica stuff that I love playing. Well, I'll tell you, you know, that you guys, are, that's. That's a definite content, um, contender to play the next Curicle after this one. Oh, this man, one. yeah, we'll be there. We'd love to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I, I really, really enjoy it. Um, it's, um, it's, it's, yeah, that all that Jimmy Reed kind of stuff. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love so, it. Too. So, um, you, you, you got, you know, with the Three Kings, you went to Memphis you know, and competed in Memphis. Like, let us tell us a bit about that, because I mean, that's that's amazing. You know, like an Australian artist, you know, blues artist in Australia to get to where you got. You know, in, in the um, the Memphis blues. Yeah, yeah. Blues well, I've been really lucky because the the way it happens, a lot of the blues societies do it now. On the Melbourne Blues Society was the first to do it. Actually, back in '95, mm. they um, sent um, they set up the Melbourne Blues Performer of the Year competition. Um, so it's a band competition that you have, and uh, the winner gets to go gets an airfare paid for to go to compete in this thing called the International Blues Challenge. 
which happens in Memphis. I've been very, very fortunate and I've won it four times. And, uh, <laughs> four times? Yeah, I know. yeah, that's in Melbourne. And yeah, uh, yeah. so I went, it's been every seven years since 95, I think. <laughs> and um, so the first time I went on my own, didn't really have much success. The second time I went to Collar Greens and Gravy, we came second overall in the entire event. Wow. And, um, second. Yeah, I know. Uh, we're, that was pretty amazing. They didn't even have, that was like, everyone was packaged in together then. They, these days they have a solo and a duo thing and a band thing, but then it was mm. all everyone there. So that was amazing to, to get that result. Oh. Um, and then the third time we went, Collar Greens and Gravy, we didn't have much success. And then I went with uh, Three Kings in 95. And we, <clears throat> they have, a, these days they have a, you have a heat and then you go, if you're successful there, you go into a semi-final and then into a grand final. Anyway, we got into the semi-finals there. Yes. Wow. I mean, yeah, that was really cool. And, uh, you know, to be able to, you know, be Australian and take blues music back to where it came, it came, came from. Yeah. Um, you know, is a really, you know, it's a pretty humbling kind of thing to do, I guess. Ah, oh, it certainly is. I mean, it's, um, well, I would think history making, you know, what you're saying. I mean, that's, it's huge. That second, that's, wow, in the world, that's, um, wow. Yeah, yeah, it, it was uh, you know, really something I'm, we're, I'm, we're all really proud of. Yeah. So how, how did the Three Kings come about? I mean, you know, like, was it just yeah, another, you know? Um, <laughs> well, I, before Collard Greens and Gravy, I actually had another band called Collard Greens and Black Eyed Peas. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so the guitar player in that group is Ben that I play with in Three Kings. So oh, yeah. we've always kind of, uh, you know, had a connection through that and other little things around Melbourne that we've done. Mm. And, um, you know, Ben's got this other group called the Benny and the Fly by Nighters, which is another really cool band. And um, <clears throat> that had sort of taken a break and uh, we just, we'd been talking for a while and we decided we'd put a band together. And we couldn't find a bass player, believe it or not. We had a, um, we wanted to be a quartet. Um, or a four piece, and uh, Ben suggested, "Hey, why don't you know I do what I do in this band, which is play guitar and play the harmonica in the rack up here." So I built this thing where I've got a microphone on there, yeah. and I'm trying to get a cupped harmonica microphone sound that you get when you play yeah. with your hands, because um, the, the the people probably don't realise, but when you hold a microphone and a harmonica together, it's really important to. Um, get a good seal with your hands to get all a really full sound. Mm. So it's very difficult to do that when you're playing like this. So anyway, I've kind of emulated it with a lot of gaffer tape and foam. <laughs> I play guitar and I play uh, the harmonica. So I've got two amps running mm. and um, the guitar sound I'm going for is a, a really something that's filling out the bass sound. Yeah. We don't have a bass player. So I'm just playing really basic stuff with a treble wound off the guitar and getting a nice big full sound underneath it yeah underneath the drums to, to you know so that's that's the that's the idea behind it and uh yeah so ben came up with that idea and we did a few practices at his place and um it sounded really we thought it sounded pretty good straight away we were taping oh. stuff on the phone with him oh, was actually you know that's certainly i think we can do this and we and then uh Je uh ben introduced me to jason the drummer who mm. plays with the Jason Lassoon is uh, uh, just a phenomenal drummer. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he holds all he holds all together really. And um, it, yeah, it was uh, the, the, from the very first time we all played together. It all sounded really good, and we all you know enjoy enjoy, enjoy playing together. And the so the, the sound we're kind of going for is um, based heavily on some of the records that we were trying to copy with people like, there's a harmonica player called Jerry McCain, and oh, he yeah. had this, there's a record that we've got of his called Choo Choo Rock, and um, it's very raw bedroom recordings that he'd done, and uh, it sort of delves into rock and roll every now and again, him, and there's another bloke called uh, Keith Thomas, who's a really great harmonica player, had his hair up in a big, uh, like Little Richard style, <laughs> and he did sort of rock and roll bluesy kind of stuff as well. So kind of um, slightly different um, guys we're listening to and, and trying to get a, a bit of a rawer kind of old sound, really. Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. I mean, it's it's great. It's it's like a yeah, an old forty five. <laughs> kind of that's, yeah, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I love playing with the band. We're, I'm really proud of what we've done. We've got a couple of records out now, and 
Yeah. I, yeah. I, I enjoy listening to them myself. And it's not often I get to say that really. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if, um, if you had the chance, who would you, out of harmonica players, who would you, um, this is a funny question to ask us, well, not really, but yeah. <laughs> um, who, yeah, who would you like to jam if you know, like, who would be your, your favorite harp player to, to have? Yeah, a, look, it's I call it, you know? easy, easy answer is it's a little Walter, there's no doubt about <laughs> yeah, it. But, I was thinking, uh, yeah. He, I mean, really, he invented this, the blues harmonica, the modern blues harmonica sound. Yeah. And, uh, he, you know, he was the most creative of all of the guys of that era. You can talk about, you know, Big Walter's up there as well. He's a great harmonica player too, but I think uh, Little Walter was far more creative. And uh, if you listen to, for example, Big Walter a lot, um, he tends to repeat himself and he tends to have patterns that he plays over and over and over again. Yeah. And you can say that to a degree about Little Walter as well, but um, even when you listen to outtakes of things like Off the Wall, um, you know, there's like half a dozen different versions of him trying to get that song right. Yeah. And there's some bits that remain the same, but the, he's just uh, creating new ideas continually all the way through it. And uh, it's an incredible feat when you think that the majority of the time on a harmonica, you're really only playing with the first six or seven holes on the instrument. And uh, the amount of music that, and the amount of ideas that he manages to get out of that is yeah. uh, phenomenal yeah. to me. It's really oh, yeah. Amazing. I'm absolutely genius. There's no doubt about it. No, definitely. Well, I just might just quickly just play one last clip um, with the Three Kings when you're actually in Memphis, which I, um, I love this clip. Yeah. It's awesome. I'll just yeah, great. That's oh, I love it. It's kind of um, when you see that, I just think you know, um, a lot of the Americans must be sort of going, "No, listen to this." <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. Thing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that clip that you just showed, then right, that was the like the first song we played. Oh yeah. Um, for yeah, you played twice. We played three shows, two, and then the semi-final. And just to let people know, too, so when you're doing these uh, blues challenges, they have all kind of uh, rules that you've got to follow. They give you, like, pretty much 10 minutes to set up, I think. Oh. And uh, if you start late, they start deducting points off you. Oh, really? And, yeah, so... Where you know a band finishes, you wait for them to get their gear off, set your stuff up, and bang, away you go. And uh, yeah, to it, it, you know to see that video there, I think you know well, it, from the very first thing, it sounds pretty good for um, something that's been thrown together that quickly. So I'm pretty happy with. It. Yeah, I mean, I never knew that. Um, I mean, that it's that's pretty full on, isn't? It? I suppose that it's all designed, you know. Just to keep all the level up there, you know, and it's, you know... It's well, they just want to keep the show slick and keep it moving really fast. But, you know, every, every time you do something like that, you're dealing with a whole set of new equipment that you might not have ever seen before. Mm -hmm. And in my case, I'm pretty much setting up two different things. I've got the guitar set up. I've got to go through one amp and a harmonica through another amp. And to get a harmonica sound right through uh, is, is really difficult. Because most amplifiers are built for guitars, so um, 
yeah, I'm under the pump to get it all done in that kind of time. So um, I was, <laughs> I'm always really relieved when it's when I can make it happen. <laughs> yeah. So um, speaking of amplifiers, um, like when we toured Charlie a couple of times, and he has the Sunny Junior, you know, so it's like a yeah a, a, an amp made for harps. What 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 do you use? Like, what's your favourite amp? I used to I used to have one of them. Yeah, and um, I actually I lent mine to him once when he came through town. Actually, but oh, cool. um, I'm endorsed by. I'm endorsed by a company from Louisiana called Lone Wolf, and um, they make incredible equipment. Um, they start off just making uh, reverb, uh, echo pedals and stuff like that. And um, he's now got a couple of amplifiers out. And my latest record I recorded with um, this small amp that he makes, and he's also got a larger version called the Harp Train 40, and that's, that's what I've been using these days. Oh, cool. Yes. So um, I suppose last but not least, um, you know, what can we expect from the Three Kings when you, um, you know, jump up on the Guricle stage? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're, we're really excited about coming up. Uh, and I love playing uh, in New South Wales. We don't get up there very often and uh, playing on a nice big stage and doing festivals and stuff like that. I mean, that song you just heard, we'll be doing that. And uh, I'm, the main thing for us is we're just trying to um, create a party atmosphere, really. I really I just want people to get up and dance and have a good time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Because, I mean, that's what it is, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's, it's ensuring, you know, that you're having fun, you know, and that you make, well, you know, everyone's enjoying it, you know, that you're enjoying it and the audience is enjoying it. And it's, it, um, yeah, it, a, yeah. We're very, we're very conscious that, you know, we're entertaining an audience. We're not there for, you know, it's just ourselves, you know, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> hmm. No, that's great. Oh, thanks so much for, um, yeah, for spending a bit of time having a chat with us um, and that it's, uh, been an absolute pleasure, mate, to talk to you. And, um, yeah, we're, we're really looking uh, forward to you, you know, coming up to play Guericle. And, you know, as your name says, you're going to be treated like kings. So you're going to have fun. Oh, great. No, we've been hearing a lot about the festival and I'm, we're really excited about coming. So thanks for uh, getting us up. Well, you learn something new every day, hey? Bloody hell. Collard's Green and Gravy actually coming second in the world in the International Blues Challenge in Memphis. That's uh, an amazing feat. That's history-making. It's, um, yeah, really cool. Really, really like that one. Um, thanks, Ian. Again, that was really good to have a chat with you. And um, anyway, I've got, uh, you've got to enter in our competition. So you just down there, you um, share and comment, you know, share the video and comment and you have, you'll be in the running to uh, win a um, season ticket. We've got four of them. Like we've got buddy packs. So anyway, check it out. And, um, you know, with that, we'll throw in some beer coolers and some T-shirts. So, you know, it's pretty good. You know. Anyway. Take care and uh, stay tuned because next week, which uh, video number 10, will be Owen Campbell. Um, yeah, Owen was the, the guy, I'm not sure if you saw, he was on uh, Stray's Got Talent and they, they called him the angry busker, but, you know, I don't think he was that angry. Um, anyway, so stay tuned for that one and uh, talk soon. Bye.